Today we're tracking along the edge of the South Fork of the Eel River. Here's this beautiful waterfall by a nice deep pool. Now this area is habitat for a lot of critters, but since it's a river, we know that we should expect to find things like otter and mink in this area. And that's what we're tracking today, river otters. Right here we're looking at a place where an otter has rolled in the sand, left some nice tracks there too, and then a raven came by and walked on top of it. Here's one of the otter's tracks. We were there for scale. And another one. And a pattern over here. This looks like possibly the right... Uh, I'm going to go with right hind on that one. Now if you look over here, you see the raven tracks where the raven walked across this rolling site that the otter has created. Raven tracks have one toe that faces backwards, three that face forward, and the middle toe is usually angled towards the inside of the animal's body. So this is the right foot. Direction of travel is that way. And there's the other raven track, the left foot. The toe facing backwards and three facing forward. This one doesn't show as well the inward facing part of the toe. So let's look at some more otter sign. Here we have an otter scat. It was deposited by one of the otters that left all the sign here that we're looking at. Looking at the tracks, I think there were five otters that came out on this riverbank. So let's go see where that happened. Okay, now we're looking at the place where I think the otters first exited the water. Notice here this large drag mark leading to this roll spot over here. That drag mark was actually made in the other direction as the otter was coming out of the water. Here's a spot where an otter rolled. You can sort of make out the length of its body and the area where it rolled there in the sand, which they do to mark scent, but they also possibly draft their coats and play a little bit while they're out here. Otters are very playful animals. There's a turkey track right there. Wild turkey, left foot, next to a deer. It's a little distracting out here because there's so many other tracks. This is where the otters exited the water. I'm going to go around and show you how many otters there were. As you can see, we're right on the edge of a very deep pool. Great fishing habitat. Next to a very beautiful waterfall on the cliff there. All right, how many otters came out of the water here? Well, let's count them. Looks like this is the trail of one otter here. Moving to the side, this appears to be the left hind and the right hind foot of one otter, which stopped here and paused for a moment if you notice the two hind feet and two front feet paired. It just stopped just for a minute. See how long that otter was. Okay, moving along. That's a raccoon track. So this is another otter coming out here. That's number three. Here's yet another one, number four. Nice track there. Looks like another left hind. And then here is otter number five coming out of the water. Here's I can tell there were five, possibly six otters. So it's hard to make out anything down here because it's really a big jumble of tracks. But you notice they came out of the water first then they came up the bank a little ways before they started to turn up the sand and roll and mark their scent. So we're going to follow this a little way. That's the roll spot that we stopped at a minute ago. There's one otter branching off, going that direction. The majority of the otter trails go this way, so let's head that direction. Look at all these otter tracks. They made a regular highway through here. Somebody else rolled right here. Notice how the soil's been all torn up. Another spot over here where an otter rolled. And what you can see pretty clearly here is the drag mark from someone's tail has dragged the sand there. Let's 
There's yet another drag mark there. There's a fairly clear dragging mark. Rolling action has happened here. Notice all the sand on top of objects that shouldn't have sand on top of them. Most of the objects out here have been rained on within the past week. So since these objects have sand on top of them and have been pressed into the soil, you can tell that the otter rolled on them. That's called dirt transfer. Now we get into an area where the ravens have been looking for food. Ravens have been digging here. Often there are acorns and things that wash up and the ravens find them here. So that's not otter sign. We're back at that scat again. We're back over here at one more roll spot, the one that we originally started at. Then I went a little farther over, right here where I left my pack. Found something really cool. Looks like five or six scats here. There's a grouping here, and one there, and another one here. Let's look closely because there's something interesting about these scats. Then we'll look at these roll areas here. These are typical otter scats. Showing bones and black tarry appearance. This is your typical otter scat. As are these here. This one is not. And that one is. It has a different appearance to it. That otter ate something different. So did this otter. Now this is interesting here. This is what I wanted to show you. Okay, this is an otter scat. And it looks kind of odd. The reason being that these are not something you typically find in otter scats year-round. Let me get this focused. These little objects in the otter scat are fish eggs. Look at that. That's an egg. That's the yolk of the egg. This is eggs from possibly one of our salmon species here. The time of year when I'm finding this is the beginning of fall. Very end of October. And on this river, that's when the salmon runs begin. So this is the south fork of the Eel River. The Eel River is one of the third biggest salmon producing rivers left in California. What happens here is a very seasonal cycle. In the fall, when the leaves start to turn on the trees and, and the air gets colder and more humidity is in the air, we start to get more rain. We can get 60 to 80 inches of rain in this area. That means this river is very seasonal in nature. Right now it's at a very low flow. But at times, the water's high enough that it reaches up there on the cliff. The water is flowing so heavily that all of this sandbar, gravel bar here, is underwater. Even the tree there in the middle. All of this is underwater. But at the beginning of the fall, the salmon run begins. And what has to happen to get that started is we need to get rain. And that will bring the river level up and then the salmon can pass over all the rocky areas in the shallow parts of the river and make their way upstream to spawn and lay their eggs. It appears right here that an otter either caught a salmon or fed on the carcass of a dead salmon and got those eggs. That's how they became part of an otter scat. Which is kind of interesting because it's early in the season right now and we've only had one rainstorm so there hasn't been a huge amount of rain. But there has been enough to bring some of the salmon up. So that's one way that you can use tracking to read some of the cycles in nature. Kind of interesting, huh? All that from a scat. The otters really like these sandy areas, it looks like. As did the raven that walked straight across it there. But if you notice, there are lots of little swirls and, and uh, 
swishes in there caused by the otter's tail and the rolling action that they do when they come out here on the sand. This one's great. Look at that. You can almost see the otter's body in action as it twisted and, and whirled around in the sand there to mark scent. That's what they do. Otters are mustelids. They're territorial animals. And this is probably a family of otters. That's why they're such a large group. Possibly a family of young that were born early this summer and are still with their mother otter. So keep an eye out for signs like this and track otters and other animals along river bars near you. There's a lot you can learn from just animal signs on the, on the ground. Here's a nice trail pattern going across the otter's roll area. So let's look closely at these tracks and see if we can identify which foot is which. Here we have a nice set of two otter tracks. I'll put the ruler down there for scale. Now one thing to look for is the position of the small inner toe. On this track, it hardly registered at all. On this track, it's quite large and registered farther back in the track than that one did. That makes this the hind track. Since this is toe number one, or the thumb if you will, this is the right foot. So that's the right hind foot of a river otter. Five toes on both feet. You can see a little indication of webbing here. And this one, where the toe is not located as far back from toe number two, this is the front foot. So that's the right front foot of the river otter. So let's see where the otters ended up. We've looked at this before. Direction of travel seems to be this way for most of the otters. Notice all the rolling marks here and the tracks heading downhill. I think they're going back to the water. Let's look closely. The otters have been walking in sand and they were wet when they came out of the water. If you notice, wherever the otters stepped, they carried some sand with them. Sand on these rocks here indicates that the otters passed this way. As well as there. And here. And guess where they ended up? At least that one did. Right back in the water. Follow the other one. Again, we have some sand dirt transfer here and here. And here where the rocks have been disturbed. And look at this rock. It moved out of its pocket. Back into the water with that otter. Notice right on the edge of the water there's a leaf that has sand grains in it. Pretty cool, huh? So you can track otters even in gravel. I hope you've enjoyed tracking these otters as much as I have. I love to do this. This is fun. Get outside and find some tracks of your own. Have fun. See you on the trail.